The poker world is in absolute uproar after the CEO of GG Poker's Russian affiliate, Poker OK, declared war on stables. This has been done with the full support of the parent GG network. Now it's been a couple of weeks since the announcement, but I didn't want to race out with some hot take. It's complex and worthy of deep consideration. If this measure is adopted across all of GG, it will be the most significant intervention in the player ecosystem in the last decade. Not just because of stables, but rather what it says about GG's broader strategy and approach to the player pool. So today we're going to go quite deep in answering the following questions. First, what is a poker stables and why did Russia's GG affiliate declare war on them? What impact do stables have on the poker ecosystem? What are the main arguments in favor of stables? How does this move fit into GG's overall strategy? And finally, is GG right to be doing this? Is it overreach or where should the line be? At its simplest, a poker stable refers to a group or team of poker players who are financially backed or sponsored by a single investor or group of investors. The concept is somewhat analogous to horse racing where a stable houses multiple horses under the same owner or management. In poker, a stable houses multiple players under the financial umbrella of their backers. The players in a stable might live together, work as a team, and receive financial backing. In return, the players agree to share a predetermined percentage of their winnings with their backers. Generally, they'll also cooperate and align in terms of strategy, training, support, data analysis, and so on. What are the biggest criticisms of poker stables with regard to the online ecosystem? Well, reading from the joint Poker OK and GG Poker statement, it says, and I quote, the activities of stables that systematically violate the rules of the platform, including team play, soft play, ghosting, collusion, bum hunting, multi-accounting, collection of statistics, notes, and mining must be stopped. It goes on. We accept as true that poker is an individual game and such activities as stables imply the promotion of an attitude towards poker as a collective game which is contrary to the entire position of GG Poker Network. Basically what they're saying is that since stables have a financial incentive to cooperate and that any such cooperation is against the spirit of individual competition, that stables will be banned from the platform. Noting specifically that particular behaviors that stables are known for, i.e. sharing data in individual players and pools, is against the spirit of fair competition. GG is pointing to specific behaviors that are clearly unfair, such as ghosting, which is swapping out a particular person at a late stage in a tournament, such as a final table, or bum hunting, jumping into a game when a specific recreational player is on. As for what all this means for the player ecosystem, all money in poker comes from people who deposit on their accounts. Of that money, some is lost to rake, but most of it to other players. Now imagine that someone is monitoring the tables for when you play. There's a team of professional opponents with a database on you that contains all of your leaks, from notes that they have collected and shared among themselves. As soon as you hop on, they sit down. In this circumstance, they're going to take your money pretty quickly and you'd rightly feel like it had been predatory. Now on the other side of that ledger, people who are part of a stables likely feel they're being penalized for professionalizing their poker game. After all, hard work, collegial study, sharing of data on player pools and tendencies, all of that is making them better poker players and a lot of these things you should be doing on your own to realize your own poker dream. Now Charlene and I have discussed this at length over the past couple of weeks and we've been doing a lot of back and forth before we get into our verdict on this and we'll share it with you. What do I think is GG's overall strategy and how does this move to ban stables play into that? Well, in a sense, this isn't new. GG has long divided its winners into three main categories. Number one are those they call good professionals. They're people that promote the game of poker as a whole. These are the Brad Owens, Andrew Nemes, Phil Galfons, and their own Fado Holtz, Adriana, and now Alexandra Botez. These are streamers, community builders, personalities who encourage people to play, including on their site. The next category are what they call the normal professionals. These are people who play individually. They focus on their own game, their win rate, red line, training, etc. They're people putting in the hard work to become crushers, move up in stakes, and be a winner in the game as a whole. 
GG insists they do not want to stop these people playing. But then there's a third category, the category GG calls the bad professional, which are basically all the things mentioned under stables, ghosting, bum hunting, colluding, etc. The stables move is getting all the attention because it's incredibly dramatic, but targeting these professionals is something GG has been all about for some time. Now there are some who insist that GG doesn't want any winners on their site. Honestly, I do not believe that. I've seen no evidence of that. However, what I do think is happening is GG is doing its best to achieve two things, increase variance and flatten payouts. So for example, when I hop on GG, I like to play a little rush to get cash game volume up, but mostly I love to play the traditional top heavy slow structure tournaments and satellites. This is because I think tournaments is where there is the most overlap with the live ecosystem and thus, for me, the most transferable skills. However, GG is going out of its way to nuke a lot of those. If you get on GG, it's mostly bounty tournaments and as of April 2024, new battle royale mystery bounties which run like crazy. The effect of this is to increase variance and democratize payouts to the largest proportion of the player pool. In other words, GG wants to look after recreational players, keep them engaged, participating and enjoying themselves. Uh, but where do I fall on this? Well, personally, I would love it if GG dumped all of its bounty and mystery bounty tournaments and massively expanded their traditional MTTs. But would I recommend they do that? Absolutely not. I'm not here to shill for GG, but the fact is they have an entire player pool to think about one that involves recruiting and retaining new players so that the ecosystem itself can survive. Now, part of safeguarding a vibrant poker ecology is ensuring that people don't overfish. I think, frankly, GG are doing a lot of the right things in this regard. We as poker players should not be acting entitled. Despite what professionals like to think, online poker platforms really don't owe us anything. We owe them for keeping the whole system afloat. So at the risk of incurring the ire of some people, I really respect, I actually agree with GG on this one. Poker is an individual form of competition and too much cooperation creates an unfair playing field. It creates an unpleasant environment for new players who, if constantly preyed upon, will become cynical and quit. If breaking the stables helps preserve the game, I'm all for it. So I have Charlene here and we want to have a quick chat on camera about this subject. We've talked a lot off screen we have quite different perspectives on this, but Charlie's is quite unique. So what do you think about GG's move to ban stables outright? And we said, be clear, Poker OK, Russia's affiliate, but part of the GG network. I guess one solution is to make it more fair and transparent. So what if in the system they self-identify themselves as part of the stables rather than ban outright? So what would transparency do? Like... Well, it enables the players to choice. Choice to play against a player that they know are part of the stables or they're not. And mm. I guess there might be an unintended consequence of like everybody knowing what a stables is, uh, choose not to and opt out. Yeah, I found this really intriguing when, when you first mentioned it because I haven't heard it anywhere else where the idea would be that you get on GG and you have to select, you know, in the terms and conditions, are you part of a stables? You click yes. And then there is a bright tag on your account for mm. all the other players to say, this person is part of a professional collective uh, and therefore be warned. And this would, I think, allow ordinary players to kind of counter exploit because let's say players aren't check raising enough and the, the stables know this in a particular field. So they're constantly you know, betting at a high frequency, knowing they're not going to be punished, and if someone check raises, they fold. Well, their strategy can be quite exploitable itself. If everyone yeah. knows that they are part of a stables, then the rest of the poker community will know how they play, and their strategy will not be as effective. They'll have to innovate more frequently and adjust mm. more frequently in order to maintain their edge. So I think that's a really great idea. But what does incentivize the whole stables thing altogether? Because if you have a giant label to say, I'm part of a stables, I can actually have a database on you. Like as a recreation player who's just getting to poker, just wants to train and understand the game, 
like in an authentic way, of course I'm going to jump out. <laughs> Why would I want to be read in that way? Exactly. I know that's really good because like, let's say you play chess against a stronger opponent. Well, everyone starts with the same information. They have the same amount of pieces uh, and the same advantages. Whereas in stables, you get more information because everyone is collecting information and sharing that information against all the players. Uh, that kind of organization means that you effectively start the game of chess with more pieces. You know, mm. Poker is a game of incomplete information. So if you've got more information, then you have an advantage. Now, some people would say, well, that's what poker is all about. Poker is about identifying exploits and uh, finding counter strategies to maximize your EV. But it, it should be done on an individual basis. You as a player see the player pool, you get the information, you put in your notes from your experience, and you build up your own skills over time. I think mm. that's generally right. But there is a line where, let's say, you sign up to a poker site. Yeah. to improve your game, which everyone should do. Everyone should get some good coaching and, and improve their game. And those coaches are going to have access to population tendencies and they're mm. going to advise you based on these kind of exploits. Uh, I think the, the challenge is when you've got an organized outfit where they're all working together to monitor in real time particular players jumping on and targeting those players. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like if you have... I don't know, Teddy Bear 58 and everybody knows what the tendencies of this user is and everybody's like, okay, like they check raise, they under check raise or whatever. For sure, that, that person itself, you don't know who they are. They could just be an everyday recreational that has a big bankroll and wants to learn poker. But suddenly, if they realize they're getting exploited based because of these stables, then they're off the site and that, just is, that basically shrinks the player pool quite mm. significantly. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with some of the professionals out there who are using their sway in the poker community to really fight back against this move. Uh, I understand for people that own stables or are a part of stables because mm. they have a direct interest and, and everyone should be able to fight for their survival in the poker world. Like, I don't begrudge them at all putting their best case forward. Are most poker professionals part of a stable? Is that like a normal thing or is it still quite a fringe thing? I think it's neither. It's, it's not quite fringe. They're, they are common. Right. Uh, and most poker professionals will swap action with people at various tournaments to smooth out the variance and so on. But whether they're part of an organized stables, that's still, I think, a small number. And one of the problems is that so many players don't even know what a stables is. That's why it's been so long in the introduction explaining it. But the thing with the professionals arguing you know, against it who aren't part of the stables, they're just like, GG's trying to stop everyone from winning and all of that. Well, well actually, you know, everyone who starts in poker starts out as a recreational player, mm. right? And if you had been that person that the stables was targeting when yeah. you first started out, how far would you have gotten your pursuit of your poker dream? It's, it's no good in one hand be like here's the poker dream if you work hard you study you you do all the the hours and uh, you make sure. all the sacrifices you can succeed in this game on the one hand and have the deck completely stacked against them in the other that that's not yeah. the right way to go about it for sure and there's always there's already anxiety in the online poker space with the rise of ai and bots like this is this is another layer in which like provides a lot of doubt and whether and the stability of the poker ecosystem online. So they'll, I guess, is that. No, that. that's a really good point. No, no seriously, that that okay. actually no, that is a good point. It the the fact one of the great challenges that GG and the online poker well existential threat to online poker is the fear that people have in the integrity of the game, mm. right? Now, if you get online and there's a group of people that swarm you and seem to just beat you every time because of your exploits, mm. you're going to be suspicious of the integrity of that website. Mm. You're going to be like, hang on a second, why is it that when I go and play in my casino or, a, or in you know, a big live multiple tournament, uh, I get much further, do my deep runs, whereas when I'm online on this particular website, I get knocked out in you know straight away. Well, you, you're going to be thinking, hang on a second, I'm, I'm getting like nixed here, I'm getting cheated. And 
you might suspect that it's the website itself. You'll be like, yeah. okay, maybe they've got their bots and they've got their RTA and they've got their AI mm. trying to take all the money from the players. When in actual fact, it's these stables that have got these highly coordinated outfits. And then of course, there's the actual uh, behaviors, the colluding, the bum hunting, uh, the ghosting. Stables do have a financial incentive to do that and the means to do that. You know, sure. if you're in the final table of a, of a major tournament, you're living with a dozen other professional poker players. Just there is a strong... Out. Yeah, exactly. Like. Exactly. So I think GG is doing a lot of good here. Um, the thing that I hate, as I mentioned in the intro, is that they're basically making all the payout structures super flat. They're doing all these yeah. bounty tournaments and things. I love the traditional format, the MTT. I think nothing beats it. Yeah. But that's my bias as someone who's more experienced than For most sure. players playing that. But if I was coming up and losing all my money straight away, yeah. uh, I would be quite grateful that GG has come up with new systems of mystery bounties and the mm. uh, battle royales and the bounty tournaments and things to keep me engaged. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't accept the argument that GG doesn't want anyone to win with these new structures. No, what they want is to maximize the pool of poker. Yeah. And that's something that individual professionals are kind of selfish about. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Because the thing is, right, where does the money come from? It will come from the recreationals. If you're going to have less recreationals coming into the poker player pool, well, I'm sorry, but you're like an overfishing. It's all going to dry up. You, you actually made a, a, a good point off camera about this um, when you were saying, hey, why don't we just have leagues where the uh, various stables are playing well, each other? Well, that's what I was saying. <laughs> that, that's also another point, like exploring that idea, right? Because I was thinking to myself, oh, if yeah, the stables are with each other in some way, because how else would you have like team poker? Like, yeah, no, that's a great point, but they're not going to do that, obviously, because... Uh, they're in there to maximize profit and mm. they don't want to play other professionals. Uh, now, I do think that the practical effect of having the transparency, giving players the option not to play against mm. people who are part of the stables, forcing the people in stables to sh show the rest of the poker community that they're in a stables will be the death of stables because um, people will stop playing with them. Yeah, they'll and opt out and then even if they try to lie and cheat, the AI bots will be after them if they're behaving in a way that they are part of the stables and they didn't agree with terms and conditions and make that transparent, well, they're kicked out. Yeah, and everyone will be watching how they play super closely. Like if you're at a table of eight yeah. people and you're trying to keep track of everybody, well, if you've got something that flags someone as part of a particular team, you're gonna be watching their frequencies and their tendencies <laughs> yeah. way more than everybody else. So I, I think without actually outright banning stables, which is kind of something I approve of, I think your solution it, it will improve the integrity of the game without having to take that drastic step. So I, I just found that really novel and, and perhaps people at GG might want to take that on board. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but yeah, what about you guys? What do you think? Uh, mm. Do you think that this is just overkill, that this is trying to destroy uh, the professionalization of the sport, that maybe you're not a professional yet, but you have aspirations mm. to become one and you don't like the way that they're kind of cracking down on the winners or do you kind of agree with me that you know we can't be selfish about these things i think gg is thinking mostly about how to attract more people to the game mm -hmm. uh what about you then of course like average me wouldn't want to go and play online poker at all or even try to because what's the point like you're gonna exploit it. there's no way of progressing my game because i'll be a target Mm. And that's what the stables are. The stables are is to find all those recreationals who do have a big bankroll, want to learn poker, but aren't there yet. Mm. And quickly, in the short term, might get a lot of profit. But in the long term, it's just going to dry up. The game's going to dry up and people aren't going to trust it anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. Solid. All right. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, I know that this has been the biggest debate in all of poker at the moment. I expect that to continue in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, let, go, let, have at it. Just be polite about it and we'll see you next, next time. time. All right, catch you next time. Ciao for now.